Hello, amigos, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Ropes with Coach Mario. Coach Mario, owner and head coach of Warriors Pride Boxing Academy here in Miami, Florida. Happy Monday, guys. Happy Monday. It's a rainy Monday here in Miami. You know, thank God uh, we didn't get any of that uh, storm coming this way. Unfortunately, it went uh, north of Florida and actually created devastation in some other nearby states. Uh, we pray for all those people that uh, survived and unfortunately their properties got uh, destroyed by uh, the accumulation of water and rainfall and everything else. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my friends, uh, you know, nature is is uh, unpredictable and we never know what we're gonna get with some of these storms coming, uh, especially in these months. So, well, anyway, today we got, I'm gonna talk about something that's been bothering me for a few days, all right? And I'm this kind of person that sometimes I hear something that bothers me and I just put it in the back of my mind and don't uh, act on it or don't think about it at the, at, the, at the exact moment when it happens. But then as time goes by, I, I continue thinking about it. And that's my nature, guys. You know, it's just uh, some things that really bother me. Um, and I just can't get them out of my mind. And I continue just thinking about it. And I got to actually tell somebody. And now I'm telling you guys uh, about a situation that happened during the fight between Ega Berlanga and Canelo Alvarez. I've already spoken about uh, my uh, perspective on the fight, what happened, how I, I uh, predicted the outcome, uh, just like everybody else. You know, we, we not too many people were get, was giving uh, Ega Berlanga any shot of actually winning, but, you know, he displayed courage and displayed you know, uh, that cria boricua that he has. And, uh, you know, at the end of the fight, you know, he was humble enough just to say uh, to Canelo Alvarez that, you know, that, that he appreciated him giving the opportunity. He made a crap load of money and he's going to continue improving. Hopefully that's, that's going to happen. But uh, before the fight, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. was interviewed by some of the the newscasters, the, the commentators there at the arena and was asked about, you know, um, was asked about Edgar Berlanga and what Edgar Berlanga has been saying about knocking out uh, Canelo Alvarez. I believe he was talking about the sixth round or something like that. And uh, Julio Cesar Chavez made some comments that have been kind of bothering me since that that night. He has said this multiple times during his lifetime. He continuously uh, makes this uh, statement about Puerto Rican fighters. And he's been doing this for many decades. He's been saying the same thing for many decades. And I want to get this right, guys. I want to set the record straight, all right? Well, what Julio Cesar Chavez said, and like I've been telling you, you know, sometimes I store things in the back of my mind and it keeps accumulating and then I got to talk about it. But Julio Cesar Chavez has been saying that Puerto Rican fighters talk a lot of shit. And that's what he said in this interview. He actually said it in Spanish. All right. And they were translating. Well, he still doesn't speak English. This guy has been, you know, around, you know, uh, the English language so so many years and he still needs somebody to translate you know, uh, easy questions for him. He was asked again, hey, what do you think of Berlanga saying that uh, he's going to knock out Canelo Alvarez in six rounds? He goes, well, you know, uh, Puerto Ricans, you know, Puerto Ricans are, Puerto Ricans uh, talk a lot of shit. And he said in Spanish, the Puerto Ricanos hablan mucha mierda. That's what he said. All right. And he started laughing. But I want to say something, not only about Julio Cesar Chavez, but about other Mexican champions that has not been spoken about, all right? So, you know, what fair is fair. 
What's good for the geese is good for the gander. So I'm gonna take this out there and say it. Not everybody, not every Mexican champion suffers from for what I call chronic excuses syndrome. All right? What is chronic excuses syndrome, you might ask? I want to tell you exactly what that means. All right? Julio Cesar Chavez himself, who says that Puerto Ricans talk a lot of shit, has been talking shit himself after he got totally beat by Frankie Randall, who was the biggest, uh, one huge upset. Frankie, the surgeons, uh, Randall, if you haven't seen that fight, you got to go check it out. He got beat. He got knocked down. He got completely uh, dismantled, completely dominated in that fight against Frankie Randall. All right. After the fight, when he was being interviewed, he had all types of excuses. No, I won, you know, this and that. He always has an excuse, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., when he is defeated. He said the same thing after being defeated by Costa Zoo. Had all kinds of excuses after being, uh, you know, handed an ass whooping by the Australian Costa Zoo. And De La Hoya completely retired him. I know he fought afterwards, but, you know, completely destroyed him 140 pounds. So he has a history of chronic excuses syndrome. Julio Cesar Chavez always has an excuse where he loses. Now, in my opinion, and I'm going to tell you how I think, I think fighters should be uh, humble enough to accept defeat, just like um, Suriel Matias did after being defeated by, you know, Lee Amparo, the Australian Lee Amparo. He was, you know, humble enough to say, yeah, I lost, blah, blah, blah. And he actually said the new champion when they were going to announce who the winner was going to be, just forecasting that he had lost. He had felt that he had lost. But you see some other Mexican champions, and like I said before, I'm not accusing all Mexican champions of suffering from chronic excuses syndrome, all right? But a lot of them do. Canelo Alvarez not only suffers from chronic excuses syndrome, but is also living in an alternate world. He doesn't see reality as all of us do. And it seems that, uh, you know, uh, all his followers suffer from the same delusion. All right, he, he suffers from that delusion of grandeur, right? In his own mind, he thinks he's the greatest Mexican fighter of all time. And he says it himself. But Canelo Alvarez, not only is he always contradicting himself about who he's going to fight, who's he's, who he's not going to fight, uh, you know, you know about his opponents that actually merit fighting with him. He says, no, well, this, this fighter uh, hasn't earned the right to fight with me because he hasn't fought anybody. Then he fights somebody about Langa. Then he says, well, you know, I never fight Mexicans. And then he fights uh, Munguia. And stuff like that. And not only does he suffer from chronic excuses syndrome, he also suffers from chronic contradicting syndrome, which he's always contradicting himself. All right. So you don't know what to believe. He has lost all credibility in the eyes of people that can actually think. So against when when Canelo fought against Triple G for the first time, he got totally dominated. He ran uh, on the, the, the last rounds. He started running away from Triple G. Something that he had accused uh, Lara, Erilandi Lara, to do against him when Erilandi Lara is known as a boxer, you know, counter puncher, you know, a very technical fighter who actually, I believe, beat Canelo Alvarez when they faced each other. He had excuses afterwards. Well, I want to fight somebody that comes forward. I don't want to fight somebody that runs. He was running all night to Cuban. That was Canelo Alvarez's statements. All right. And then after the fight, first fight with Triple G, he also made other comments. Like he said, I think I was superior in the ring. I won at least seven or eight rounds. 
I was able to counter punch and made Gennady wobble at least three times. If we fight again, it's up to the people. I'll feel frustrated over my draw. A draw that was a gift for Canelo Alvarez because, as you all know, Adelaide Bird, the totally corrupt judge, the wife of the well-known referee, you know, who shared the same last name, gave Canelo Alvarez a card, an unbelievable card that favored him 118 to 110. 118 points for Canelo Alvarez, 110 for Gennady Golovkin. You're seeing Golovkin win just a couple of rounds, maybe. All right? You can see his mother hysterical. Canelo Alvarez's mother hysterical in the corner. Say, no, they stole my son. They stole the victory of my son. All right? So there is a history. There is a, a conduct. There's a pattern here with some of these Mexican champions. With the chronic excuses syndrome. With a lot of these Mexican champions who suffer from chronic excuses syndrome, right? We already spoke about Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, saying the Puerto Ricans talk a lot of shit, but he's been full of shit after a lot of his losses talking that he's, oh, why did I lose, blah, 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 oh, excuses, all kinds of excuses, all right? And nobody has ever spoken about this, which is weird, but we have all thought about it, and I've actually spoken to other people that analyze fighters and they say man these guys are always having an excuse some of these champions some of these mexican champions all right and i can uh definitely say that you know usually fighters talk crap before a fight just to sell the fight and that's what uh some of these puerto rican uh, legends had done like macho camacho and wilfredo gomez and they lost I mean, when Fergal Gomez got completely destroyed, he went out in his shield, he showed the cria, and he talked a lot of shit because this guy has knocked out, had knocked out everybody before the fight. Salvador Sancho was not given a, a shot by any professional expert, any expert out there that knew anything about boxing back in those days. You could hardly see anybody favoring Salvador Sanchez in that fight. All right. So when you have people like Julio Cesar Chavez continuously saying that Puerto Ricans talk a lot of shit, they don't look at themselves in the mirror. You also have other commentators from Mexico. You see Pro Box TV in Spanish. You know, these Mexican commentators. I believe they, there's this guy uh, they call uh, Bible of Boxing. And he, he said the same thing. Yeah, Puerto Ricans are Parlanchines, they talk a lot, blah, 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 and all this other stuff. But he doesn't see his own people, his own champions, who are also always full of excuses when they lose. So we already spoke about Julio Cesar Chavez and all his excuses after losing against Frankie Randall, Costa Sue, Oscar de la Hoya. Canelo, with his total, total uh, you know, delusional comments, about he's the best, you know, contradicting himself continuously. All the excuses when he lost, when he, in my opinion, lost against Triple G and they, they awarded him a draw because of Adelaide Bird's card. You know, all these contradictions. We already spoke about that. Now let's talk about somebody else, somebody more recent. What about Pitbull Cruz talking all this shit, you know, who actually didn't want to shake Rayo Valenzuela's hand uh, at the face-off. You know, Rayo Valenzuela is a good kid. He, he's a humble kid. Refused to uh, shake the hand of Rayo Valenzuela. And after the fight, had all kinds of excuses. He made all these comments. All right, what, what comments did he make? He said, well, the crowd knows who won. The crowd knows who the real winner is. His father stormed out of the that stadium saying, Oh, what a what a robbery. 
when it was clear to see that the most technical fighter, the fighter that dominated with footwork, with skills, with nice combinations, was Rayo Valenzuela. Completely dominated a one-dimensional Pitbull cruise. And what happened after the fight? Chronic excuses syndrome from another Mexican champion. You see the same with, with uh, Fernando Vargas when he lost against Tito Trinidad. And so many other champions that are full of excuses after losing a fight. Be humble, guys. When you lose, you lose. You accept it. Berlan accepted it. He didn't talk shit. He didn't say, oh, well, I think I won. And you have a lot of fighters, you know, American fighters that before the fight, you know, in order to sell the fight, they talk shit back and forth. You know, Caleb Plant did it. Uh, Mayweather did it. So many other, uh, Adrian Broner did it. You know, you have a lot of fighters like that. All right. But what about the other side? Those are accusing Puerto Ricans like Julio Cesar Chavez and some other Mexican commentators that's been gone, going on for years, consistently accusing Puerto Ricans of talking a lot of shit. And like I said before, guys, you know, on a previous episode, when I compared the two countries, the rivalry between two countries, it's a, it's a, it's a rivalry that exists between two powerhouses of boxing. And I'm gonna tell you something. I love Mexican boxers. I love the way they fight, their aggressiveness. But you know, you gotta, you gotta call it like you see it. I call it like I see it. And I criticize some of my people. And when I say my people are the fighters that I, I like when, when they do something that I think is incorrect. All right, I'm old school guys. I like fair game, you know, fair game is for both sides. I'm an impartial judge of character. And as you all know, this rivalry has been going on for decades. And I, like I said in my previous episode, when I compared the two, two rivalries, the two countries, these two powerhouses of boxing, Mexico is 216 times bigger than Puerto Rico. <laughs> Mexico has mul multiple millions of more people. Mexico has a huge population versus Puerto Rico. Many more millions than Puerto Rico. Many more millions of people than in the small island of Puerto Rico. You know, and there is this war, this rivalry between these two countries. And I understand when some of these Mexican fighters are constantly demeaning their Puerto Rican counterparts. All right, because there is a war there. All right, there is a rivalry there. There's a rivalry there that Puerto Rico is winning so far. All right, I think the in championship fights is 84 to 70 something, 72 or 73. So Puerto Rico being a smaller country 35 miles wide, 100 miles long, with only 3 million people, 216 times smaller than Mexico, is beating a giant in boxing like Mexico. So there is a little bit of envy, I would say, you know, a little bit of jealousy, I would say, some of these Mexican fighters talking shit about Puerto Rican fighters. And you can see that not only in Mexican fighters, you can see in Teofimo Lopez, how much shit he's talked about Puerto Ricans, and now he's talking shit about African-Americans, calling them monkeys, all right? So we have some people that can't contain their emotions, that are actually uh, airing out their own frustrations, and they're showing everybody what they're made of, all right? They're true colors. And Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, obviously he's going to vouch for his people. He's going to support his Mexican compatriots. You know, he's going to support them, but has been saying the same thing about Puerto Rican fighters for many, many years. 
So again, guys, chronic excuses syndrome. All right. I'd rather say, you know, talk shit before a fight. And I don't like that. Then always have an excuse and be, uh, you know, a sore loser. And you see a lot of these champions like Canelo Alvarez, like Pitbull Cruz, like Julio Cesar Chavez. To always have a fucking excuse when they lose. To always have an excuse when they don't get their way. To always have an excuse when the cards don't don't uh, give out the results that they thought they should have because they feel privileged somehow. No, man, be humble. And that's what people like. And that's what people like, humility from these boxers, like Salvador Sanchez, like Tito Trinidad, like Miguel Cotto. So my friends, chronic excuses syndrome is a contagious disease in Mexico. Chronic excuses syndrome affects some Mexican champions. Always have an excuse, always contradicting themselves, always saying one thing and doing another. So who's talking shit? Who are the people talking shit? And remember one thing, guys, my father was Mexican and I'm not talking about Mexican born in the States, bro. No, Mexicano de pura cepa, my father. 100% Mexican. My family on the fa my father's side. 100% Mexicano. None of that fucking, uh, you know, Mexican from the States. Chicano, none of that shit. The real McCoy, right? I learned to speak Spanish. But that was my, my, my first language before learning how to speak English. All right? It wasn't like... I can hardly say a few words in Spanish and say it. Oh, I'm Mexican. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm Honduran. Well, you can hardly speak the language. You don't even know your national anthem from your own country. No, sir. My father was born in Mexico. He met my mother in, in, in Mexico when my mother was studying in Mexico uh, at Palacio de Bellas Artes, but she was a, an artist. My mom, Cuban. They got married in, in Cuba, and that's where I was born, in Camagüey, Cuba. So I was raised with both cultures, and I love Mexico, and I love the food of Mexico. And don't take this program like I'm dissing the Mexican people. <laughs> no, because my cousin, my first cousins are Mexicano. Just like my first cousins are Cubans. But I, I'm, I gotta be honest with you. And when I see the truth, I talk about it. Whether you like it or not. I can be on, on your side on one issue and then against you on another issue. All right? I know my people. And when I say my people, I'm talking about my Puerto Rican people. Because I was raised there. All right, and I know the pros and cons of my of that culture, just like you know the pros and cons of the Cuban culture and the Mexican culture. All right, I understand that. I'm 100% Latino. I love my 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 roots, and I can listen to mariachi music, and I can listen to salsa, and I can listen to the Cuban music from back in the day. You know, I love all that. And also, you know, to listen to the music of Motown, you know, all this other music, jazz from here, from the States. You know, so it's great to be open-minded about different things in life, learning about different cultures. It is stupid to just stick to one culture, just to only know one culture. That shows ignorance. So, and I see that a lot. A lot. People that only know a little bit about their culture, but they don't know anything about el anything else. I know a little bit. Of, I wouldn't say a little bit, but I know a lot about the Mexican culture, 
Because I lived in Mexico for four years when I was a little kid. I went to school there, had friends there. My first cousins were there, you know, lived in Mexico. My father was 100% Mexicano. My abuela was from, from uh, Puebla, Mexico. My ancestors on the Mexican side fought in, uh, you know, Cinco de Mayo War. My abuelitas fought in some, uh, on the revolution with my father on the back. All right, so I know the Mexican culture, I know the Cuban culture, I know everything we lost when communism came to the island, all right? So what I'm trying to tell you is that I have no hatred against any of these cultures because I am part of those cultures. All right, but I call it like I see it before. And like I've been telling you, I call it like I see it. And when I see something that is uh, problematic or is a syndrome and it's repetitive and it shows us hatred, you know, and I understand is a rivalry, but Julio Cesar Chavez have been talking shit for many years and I admire the fight. But he's always talking shit. Nobody has actually told him, hey man, who talks shit more than you? Who's always had an excuse after losing a fight? You always have an excuse. What about your, uh, your people? Canelo Alvarez always having an excuse, always contradicting himself. What about that? Isn't that talking shit? What about people Cruz talking shit and you know, having excuses after losing to Rayo Valenzuela. What about that, brother? But you don't have uh, commentators or reporters with balls to call it like they see it. And you see a lot of these yes men who, they, who do not dare to contradict these champions because what happens? They're not going to be given access to these champions in the future, if they say anything that is controversial, anything that goes against their against their rhetoric, anything that goes against their storyline. But anyway, guys, that's just what I wanted to say. I've been hearing this for many years, so it, it came to a point that when I listened to Julio Cesar Chavez talk that smack the other day in uh, the pre-fight interview, of Berlanga versus Canelo Alvarez continue to spread that rhetoric, that falsehood of calling all Puerto Ricans, you know, shit talkers. So I had to mention it today, guys. It's a Monday. I just had that for over a week. So it's been working on my head. But anyway, guys, I want to know what you guys think. Is it just me? Or do I see that rhetoric coming from a lot of the Mexican commentators, the Mexican reporters, the Mexican champions about Puerto Rico, but they don't look at themselves and all the shit they talk when they lose. So let's be honest. Let's be, you know, impartial about all this and call it like you see it. All right, I admire the Mexican fighters. I love their style. I admire Puerto Rican fighters. I love their style. And I love when a Puerto Rican fights a Mexican. I love the clash of these two cultures. But let's be fair, all right? What well, fair is fair. Anyway, guys, this is all I have for today. I just wanna leave this uh, uh, video and I wanna listen to your comments. What do you think? Is it only me who sees this? All right. Am I wrong in talking about this? You know, is it controversial for some people? Are they going to call me a hater, Mexican hater or traitor or whatever? You know, I'm just honest, guys. And I can talk about uh, things that I see in my own family, which I don't agree with. All right. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to be truthful. And something I learned in the Marine Corps and, by, by, and the way I was raised was honor, courage, and commitment. I've always been that way. Whether I see my son doing something that is I consider not ethical, 
even though he's my son and I love him, it's the same thing with boxing. I love boxing. But some things are right and some things are wrong. Am I am I gay? Uh, you know, some pushback from some fanatics that follow the sport of boxing who do not know the sport of boxing as much as I do. Because I've been following this for decades, since I was 10 years old. But anyway, guys, until next time, this is Coach Mario. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Let me know what your comments are. Let me know what you think about this controversial, if you think it's a controversial topic. But until next time, God bless you all. Have a great week and peace.